Greetings, Creepers. This is Dr. Leech, the Leech Doctor from DailyNightmare.com. And uh, I'm sneaking this little extra video in because at least one viewer has said it was difficult to listen to me talking when they were trying to read to see what uh, the titles on my bookshelf were. So I'm going to make this a series of um, library tour videos. Um, and I should tell you um, in advance that there is not some overarching system to my library and in fact it's always a nebulous chaotic amorphous thing uh, a couple times every couple years I radically revise what goes on what shelf um, and in fact for the most part what happens on these shelves even um, it's a little random a little uh, dependent on the size of the volume you, you'll, you'll, you'll discover but one thing I want to be totally clear about is um, I haven't read all of my books. Uh, I have a phenomenon of uh, actually when I've read a book, unless it's a significant volume that feels good in my hands, I, I don't know if I want to keep it. Uh, so a, a, a good percentage of my books, I don't think I've read these particular volumes. Uh, but I'm going to start with this shelf because it's um, right about at camera height. And we will go through in order and you will see the anarchic unshuffled uh, or, or nicely shuffled a chaos that is my brain. Uh, and the first book here is Children of the Black Sabbath by uh, uh, Anne Hibert. Um, I believe she was a French-Canadian writer who wrote most of her career in France. I, I think I did a, an unboxing video when I un opened this up. This is an extremely bleak novel. Um, I read it when I first got it. It's a quick read-ish. Dark, very dark, um, dealing with um, delusion and uh, Satanism and incest and uh, all sorts oh uh, and 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 um, and a convent uh, nuns weird stuff dark book but man I never would have heard, I never would have read this if a centipede press hadn't put out this lovely edition I probably wouldn't have even heard of Anne Hebert uh, without centipede press putting in another um, uh, plug for them this other book here, you know, um, I have two copies of this book. This is The Conspiracy Against the Human Race by Thomas Ligotti. One that I have kept in its plastic for inexplicable fanboy reasons. Um, complicated reason, complicated reactions to the book. It is, it is his one book of nonfiction, to the degree that nonfiction actually exists. Um, it, uh, it has to do with uh, the philosophy of antinatalism, which sounds um, obscure, but if you watched the first season of True Detective, and honestly, wasn't there only really one season of True Detective? I'll, I'll leave that to discuss in the comments. But the one season of, of uh, True Detective, um, uh, the, the, one, um, uh, the one darker figure uh, uh, espoused a, a notion that wouldn't it be better if we just weren't um it uh in that volume it's a book not for everyone it's a book like um uh there's a poem about um mantegna's uh portrait of the of the dead christ this is a port the uh the brutal holes in mantegna's christ it, it, it's something that would would cause you to um uh lose your faith um it's not a book for everyone um and in fact that's probably no one is going to accidentally stumble across this book um that's one of the points he makes is that when if you are espousing a pessimistic perspective you know folks aren't going to beat down uh the door to get to you that's uh just the way things are um so that's that might be why i have two copies of it one one that's um the reading copy that i've read that i uh page through and um and this other one, because I know for a fact this will never be reprinted. <laughs> um, it's just the way things are. Um, as it as it happens, the other rest of the, or a good chunk of that shelf to there also is Thomas Ligotti story. So if you don't know who Thomas Ligotti, he is exactly the kind of thing we like. Um, he was uh, born and raised, I think, in Michigan. Um, went to Macomb Community College, I believe. Um, writes several things are remarkable about uh, Ligotti. Um, he writes almost exclusively short stories. I think the longest thing he has ever written 
I don't have a copy of. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it was a novella. There's something remarkable about the will to write a piece its appropriate length. Um, certainly, one would make a, uh, a better career as a writer writing novels. That's easy sold. That, that, that's what is happening right now. Um, you may make the argument that actually in the era of the e-reader, the novella is the perfect length. Really, part of the 20th century, you could actually make a living writing short stories. And that's that's the heyday of, you know, Faulkner and Hemingway and 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 those ilk. You know, when, when the short story got its, uh, you know, provenance as, as the uh, as the the way to communicate stories, uh, uh, tales, um, because because you could write for a magazine and you could be paid enough to actually live. You cannot make a living you, you, writing short stories today. There there is there's absolutely no way to do that. Um, later part of the 20th century, it it moved towards being uh, novels. You had to write novels to be a professional writer. The way he did it is he, for his entire career, he worked for, um, he, he did a different gig. Um, he, he, had, he worked for Gale Research, I believe, uh, until he retired, moved to Florida, as many folks in Michigan do when they, they work a job, retire, move to Florida. Um, he, I, he's still an honorary member of the uh, Midwest snob horror because he is just so deliciously snobby. Um, He's an acquired taste, or actually, I don't know if he's an acquired taste, because, I mean, um, try him. You may not like him. He is just, he, he is a, um, it, it's more about the experience of um, how horrible existence is, not, not big things attacking you with the blood and the gore and that kind of thing. Uh, there will not be a movie made. Hmm. There will not be a blockbuster made of his movie, uh, made of his stories. That would be my suspicion. Um, these three are the lovely reprints um, done by Subterranean Press of his uh, first couple collections, Not to Worry, Grim Scribe, and Songs of the Dead Dreamer. I've talked about Subterranean Press. I love their business model. I love what they do. They do really lovely volumes, you know. Uh, that make that make work a little more available. Um, last year, I believe, two sets of interviews with uh, Legati came out, neither of which I have read. Um, one is Born to Fear, and this other one, I think this is the Spectral Link. I haven't opened these. Um, I also haven't wrapped them in plastic, which is what I do because I'm like that. Um, I buy these... Uh, Plastic sheets from Broad Art, I think they are. Uh, a, a big long um, roll of it, and I cut it, and just it protects the um, the dust jackets from my gooey little gummy fingers. That's what happens. Um, when someone was looking through the um, my, my collection, and said, "Why are all your books wrapped in plastic?" Um, it's uh, well, because. So I also have um, earlier hardbound editions. Because I like reading hardbounds. Hardbounds are, um, uh, and I bought these long before I bought the, the reprints. It, 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 it's just a more sensual experience reading a, a hardbound book to me. Um, I, I have read things on e-readers. I've read things on my phone, and I think that's just totally amazing. Um, still, my primal experience of reading is curling up in a particular chair with a light and... Um, any hardbound book in my hands. Um, I obviously read a bunch of different things. I read comic books, I read paintings, um, but hardbound books still have a special place in my heart, which is what many of my shelves are. Um, next next book here is uh, a couple of black magic novels from uh, Dennis Wheatley. Um, I have not read this. I, I saw this at a bookstore in Toronto Toronto's fantastic because it gets um, books from, it being part of the Commonwealth, gets books from London. And you know, so the printings that, that you'll never see in the United States, um, you'll, you'll find them in like the remainder bin. I got this for just a couple bucks 
a couple bucks Canadians, a couple loonies, if you will, maybe a loonie and a couple toonies or something. Um, and he's someone who I know, honestly, I did not know as a novelist, but I knew from two of these uh, novels that have been turned into movies by Hammer. Um, uh, the Devil Rides Out from 1968, I'm going to say, with Christopher Lee, and To the Devil, a Daughter, which I think is 1976. Um, and then Gateway to Hell, who knows when that was. I, I don't know if that was actually a novel. These novels, I mean, if that was actually a movie. The novels are from, I think, the mid-30s. He was um, you know, a British occult writer, you know, I think he, um, my, se my sense is that he wasn't an occultist himself. I think he, um, just was sort of riding the coattails of the, um, Aleister Crowley black magic Satanism stuff. Um, so lurid, I mean, what a, and also it's just, it's a great thing to have on your bookshelf because it makes people scared. A black book with a red pentagram on it, man, nothing says like that. Um, and the last book on this shelf is actually, it's, it's three books, um, I'm sorry, it's six books because I can't count. Um, it's Michael McDonald's, um, Blackwater Septilogy? Whatever. Um, I have not read these. I, have, uh, I haven't even opened them up. That's not actually true. I've opened it up. I've, I've paged through them because it's from Centipede Press. Centipede Press is, um, uh... Totally what I love with books, but you know that, because if you've seen my other videos, they do lovely volumes, and this is, um, pretty much, I take Jared's, uh, word for it, if, if he says something that's a classic, um, someday I'm gonna have to read these, uh, and, um, you can tell that if I really liked someone who writes short stories, it's gonna be a little while before I read someone who writes a six-novel set, um, Anyways, uh, I, I got a set, like, it's a, you know, dark, gothic-y kind of thing. Um, I'll have links in the show notes to, from, to someone who actually has read the volumes. Um, there are certain things that, that I want to buy when they are available, and I knew that this was not going to appear again, so I wanted to uh, collect it uh, when it was available. And I had a little bit of money at that time. I don't always have enough money to buy what I want. Um, anyways, what, oh, this is a... Um, this is a, a little uh, printer from Centipede Press saying thank you for buying our books. That's the extent of this particular shelf. I shall uh, do a tour of some of these other shelves, and at some point I should probably do a tour of the whole house. Our whole house has a sort of um, Adam's Family vibe. Um, an Adam's Family vibe in that it's weird stuff just scattered everywhere, although probably with uh, more... A monster's house style of tidiness. Did you ever get the sense that the monsters just had dust and cobwebs everywhere? What the hell did Lily do all day? She didn't dust. And of course they didn't, I mean, obviously Morticia didn't dust. They had lurch. Lurch was dusting constantly. Um, we have no lurch. We, there, there is, there is um, a, a glorious sense of disarray and clutter, which could be um, an evocative metaphor for my brain. Um, regardless, uh, I, we shall uh, share the oddities of, of our other life as I have shared the oddities of this shelf. Um, honestly, I think these fit, um, are, are on the sh same shelf because they all are the same size book. Those are a little small. Yeah, well, you know, maybe. Um, anyways, this is the Leech Doctor from DailyNightmareDoctor.com. If you like these videos, even this insane thing of me talking about books that happen to be on one of my shelves, subscribe, why don't you? Like, or hey, if I've said something <gasps> scandalous um, or controversial, don't know if I have. But if I have, please take me to task in the comments. Just, like, let me have it. Troll me, please. Um, until next time, peace. Just a minute, Doctor. You've gone too far. Lily Munster? Come on now. That woman had a lot to deal with. That crazy monster of a husband just for starts? And maybe someone else could have done something, like that layabout father of hers. Or those kids? They were teenagers. They could have kicked in. You just have gone too far criticizing Lily Munster. This rebuttal is brought to you courtesy of Elsa L. of DailyNightmare.com.